Hello everyone, welcome to the fourth installment, of Physics is Easy, Very Easy. Mind you, not dumbed down physics, but physics in detail, that ironically, only makes it easier, since you now can easily follow it. Before we go on with the math, let's apply what we, already know, to develop our first formula to describe a physical process. And what better process than the one that is the foundation of all physics, the transmission of movement between objects, which by the way is not to be confused with energy, given by the speed and the mass of the object. Once one knows the speed that an object is moving, the energy is easily known. We will mathematically describe the speeds that two objects will get, after colliding head on with each other. If you look up collision you will notice that such a simple process and concept, has been turned into a cumbersome and convoluted mess, that requires several equations and about a page of calculations. Actually currently in the Wikipedia article for collision, there is a request for a clean up because of such a mess. We on the other hand, will describe such a process in a single, clear and easy equation. As in science we will need to perform experiments, to confirm and validate our results, so along with the formulating, we will use a virtual lab. We'll use Collision Lab version 2.01 from the University of Colorado, but you can further validate our results, out of there as well. As with the scientific method, let's first observe and start with the simplest case possible, or from the principles. Remember that numbers represent quantities in the real world, and we need to identify what quantities we are dealing with. Now here as you can see we have two masses mass number 1 or m1, in kilograms in red, and the other mass m2, in kilograms in green. Another quantity that these masses have, is their velocities, so we will give m1, a velocity, in meters per second, or v1, and give m2 the velocity of v2. Let's first figure out the velocity v1 after collision, and to do this we obviously have to know what is the total approach velocity, so that is our first question. What is the total velocity that m1, will collide with m2? Since the masses are facing, and moving towards each other, the velocities will add up. v1 then will be added by v2, and because the motions are in opposite directions, v1 can then be seen as moving in a positive direction and v2 in a negative direction, but in order for them to add up, we will have to apply what we learned before, if we were to write v1 plus v2 or for instance 1 plus minus 1, we wouldn't have an addition, we'd have a subtraction due to the signs involved, so to have the total colliding or approach velocity we have to express it as, approach velocity equals v1 minus v2, or for example approach velocity equals 1 minus minus 1, remember that when both quantities have the same sign it is a plus sign. In this logical way the equation should work no matter what the numbers are, because we are taking into account the facts of reality. So, if for example, v1 is 1 and v2 is minus 2, the approach velocity equals 1 minus minus 2, equals 3, or if v1 is 1 and v2 is 1, then the approach velocity equals 1 minus 1 equals 0. There is no approach. Or if v1 is 1 and v2 is 2, then approach velocity equals 1 minus 2 equals minus 1. In this case both masses will move away from each other in an opposite or negative speed. Here ladies and gentlemen we have the first term of our equation. And now that we have the approach velocity of m1 let's let the objects collide. Again let's start from the simplest case, like when the objects have no elasticity or cannot bounce off each other, or an inelastic collision. Let's set v1 to 1 meters per second and v2 to 0 meters per second, and have both masses of 1 kilogram. Ok let's let them go. They stuck together, since they have no elasticity, and m1 continue to move in the positive direction at the velocity of 0.5 meters per second. What is going on here? Continuing to observe we realize that because the objects hit one another, the speed was divided in half, 
from a velocity of 1 to a final velocity of 0.5, and since the quantities that define the objects are their masses, and because it was the meeting of m1 plus m2 that divided the speed in half, it is logical to think that the final velocity or fv is equal to the approach velocity divided by m1 plus m2, which gives the same result of 0.5 as in the experiment. The equation is working with these numbers and should work with different ones, so let's try other numbers. Let m1 be 1 and m2 be 2 at the same velocities. Then the final velocity of m1 equals 1 minus 0, divided by, 1 plus 2, equals 0 0.33, as we can verify in our lab. Or, with yet another example, if m1 is 1 and, m2 is 8, at the same velocities. Fv equals approach velocity divided by 1 plus 8, equals 0 0.11. Now let's try another example where V2 is not 0. Leaving the mass is unchanged. Let V2 be minus 1 meters per second. Then the result is Fv equals approach velocity divided by 1 plus 8 equals 0 0.22. As we can see, in this case the equation is wrong. But why? Being crucially obvious again. We see that the speed of v2 is not really taken into account. The situation can also be interpreted as v1 moving at 2 meters per second and v2 stationary, when in reality it is not. We must take into account that v2 is actually moving in the opposite direction, so we add v2 once again to the equation, as in fv is equal to v2 plus av divided by m1 plus m2 or for instance minus 1 plus 1 minus minus 1, divided by 1 plus 8, equals minus 0 0.77. We have been logically and factually verified that this describes the final velocity of m1, in an inelastic collision. And from our equation so far, we can see that it wouldn't describe an elastic collision. So that is our next question, what makes the objects bounce off each other? by continuing to be crucially obvious, and this time setting the collision to have 100% elasticity, we notice in our equation that what determines, the final velocity is the division of the velocities by the sum of the masses, that this term, division by, m1 plus m2, obviously divides or cuts down the final velocity. Seeing that an elastic collision is the reflection, in the true physical sense of the word, of the masses, it is then operationally logical to think that the elasticity is determined by a term that is the inverse of the division by the sum of the masses, or that, it's a multiplication of the subtraction of the masses, so our equation is now V2 plus AV divided by, M1 plus M2, times, M1 minus M2, or for instance minus 2 plus 1 minus minus 2, divided by, 2 plus 8, times, 2 minus 8 equals minus 3.80. That is logically sound, and as we can see accurate in reality as well. This works for, a 100%, elastic collision. But what about for a partial elastic collision? By being clear as always, we notice in the last term, multiplication of the subtraction of the masses, and considering we want to know the final velocity of m1, it is m1 that is subtracted by m2. So we would want m1 to be just partially, subtracted by m2, at a given percentage. We must find a way, to reduce m2 by a given percentage. The formula for doing this is the percentage divided by 100, times the quantity in question. Let's simplify this by just representing the division of the percentage by 100, as a single number that multiplies m2, this number would be the often called, coefficient of restitution, that determines how much elasticity, 
a mass has, and we shall call it Q. In logical conclusion, then the term of elasticity, the multiplication of the subtraction of the masses, becomes multiplication by, m1 minus, m2, times Q. Q is a regulator of the elasticity, if you will. And our equation becomes, FV equals V2, plus AV divided by, M1 plus M2, multiplied by, M1 minus M2, times Q. Or for instance, setting Q as 0.8, or at 80%, we have, minus 5 plus 2 minus minus 5, divided by, 3 plus 2, multiplied by, 3 minus, 2 times 0.8 equals minus 3.04. And finally we have our easy equation for the final velocity of m1, in either an elastic or inelastic collision. But wait, you might be asking, what about the final velocity of m2? Well, that is even easier, it is just the remainder. We have verified that q is indeed the coefficient of restitution, which can also be determined by dividing the total bouncing speed of a collision by the total approaching speed, and as we have studied before, if we invert this equation, q equals bouncing velocity divided by the approach velocity, to q times approach velocity equals bouncing velocity, knowing the total bouncing velocity we can conclude that the final velocity of m2, or fv2 is just the result of bouncing velocity, minus the final velocity of m1, and because of the signs of the numbers involved, it is expressed as, fv2 equals bouncing velocity plus fv. For our last example the total bouncing velocity is 7 times 0.8, that equals 5.6, and the final velocity of m2 is then 5.6 plus minus 3.04, equals 2.56. And that's it, a simple formula for collision, elastic, or unelastic. This should remind us that reality, just like math, is composed of quantities and operations, therefore physics can be a very fun game and easy to do. See you in the next installment.